Hello, and welcome back to Elevate Your Multi-Cloud Experience with Dell Technologies on theCUBE. I'm Rob Strecce, Managing Analyst with theCUBE Research. We just heard from my colleague Dave Vellante and Shannon Champion from Dell on an overview of Apex Storage for Public Cloud. Today, we're going to talk about a new standard in multi-cloud management and operations from Dell. Let me welcome to theCUBE, Maggie Kapoor, Director of Product Management for Multi-Cloud, and Allison Langan, Director of Product Marketing from Dell Technologies. Welcome both. Thanks for having us here. Well, thank you for being here. I think this is a lot of fun. I think multi-cloud is really the standard. I think cloud operating models are really where it's at. And I think it's more than just a place. It's how you actually go and build it out and operate it. So I think this is a really timely discussion that we're going to have here. So let's kind of really jump into the announcements. Uh, Allison, can you share with us what was announced? Sure, so essentially um, we are delivering, continuing to, to deliver on the promise we made at Dell Technologies World year, earlier this year of delivering seamless uh, management and data mobility between on-premises and public cloud, uh, and continuing to extend our best-in-class storage software into the public cloud. And with that, today I'm excited to share that our first set of management and operations capabilities within the Dell Apex Navigator family are going to be generally available with the announcement of Dell Apex Navigator for multi-cloud. And with this offer, it's essentially going to deliver improved TCO, centralized management, seamless data mobility, operational consistency between on-prem and your public cloud environments, and unparalleled performance. Uh, today, specifically, what is a, what we're announcing availability of is our Dell Apex block storage for AWS that will support Navigator. And we are also going to be um, delivering our day, Dell Apex file storage for AWS early next year. No, this is, I, I think, super exciting stuff. And I, I think, again, it's really timely in where you can go with this and how you can get cost savings. Because I think everybody's looked at it and been stunned with their bill that they get at the end of the month from one of the big hyperscalers. So Maggie, why don't you really kind of drill down a little bit further into some of the compelling features that are being announced in the product. Sure. Yeah, so, you know, our goal when we started to engineer and architect our product, we wanted to simply bring a centralized management uh, tool set for our storage customers um, that is not just centralized, but also provides a very secure environment for, for our customers, right? So really the, the key characteristics of the, or the top things that we're bringing to market with this first release, as Allison said, it's block storage on AWS, and it revolves around five things. Uh, first and foremost, security. I just mentioned that, and I'm going to keep mentioning that because- You have to. <laughs> right, it, it is so important, right? And uh, so we bring in that uh, zero trust framework as we started to architect the product and really how do we deliver a secure way of uh, operating in a multi-cloud environment. The second being deployment. As we're bringing our storage endpoints to the cloud, how do we easily automate the deployment process, not just of our storage endpoint, but also the underlying public cloud infrastructure. And then the third piece as we move on is the management aspect of it. How do you manage uh, you know, securely, but also do lifecycle management on your endpoints uh, across the board? Uh, and so doing that as a SaaS portal uh, is, is what we're bringing. Um, Moving on after management, it's all about monitoring. So how do you monitor uh, you know, your endpoints once they are deployed in the public cloud? But I do want to call out that it's not just monitoring of your cloud endpoints, but also bringing in that on-prem aspect of it. And finally, uh, the fifth uh, tenant, which is data mobility, which we are super excited to bring to, to our customers, which is the seamless ability to move data, move workload uh, between on-prem and the public cloud, depending on you know, whether your business needs change or uh, upgrade or your workloads change, right? Um, so those are the key, 
key things that we're bringing to market. Yeah, I, I think it's huge to bring that together. Again, multi-cloud is, I, I think, the standard. I, we have some research that says it's kind of hit an equilibrium between hyperscalers, meaning in cloud and on-prem, and they're really, I, I think this is critical for people to be able to, and especially that last point about the data mobility, and we'll kind of dig in on that uh, in a little bit, but Allison, what are some of the outcomes that customers can expect you know, with this and from these updates? Right. So with Apex Navigator for multi-cloud, we're essentially empowering our customers uh, to be able to un unlock a new standard of excellence with multi-cloud management and operations. Um, through this uh, centralized SaaS-based intuitive experience, customers are going to be able to get up and running quickly through the self-service Apex console or through APIs. Uh, they're going to be able to optimize workload placement more easily with purposeful data and application mobility. Um, you know, Maggie touched on security. You're going to be able to reduce risk with secure operations and zero trust adoption. And you're going to be able to do all of this from that single centralized user interface. And so all of this value just builds upon the value of our storage endpoints in the cloud as well, which are essentially bringing enterprise class storage capabilities into a public cloud environment. So things like thin provisioning, data reduction, uh, encryption, uh, you name it. These are you know, enabling customers to power even the most demanding and mission critical workloads in the public cloud that they weren't necessarily able to do before. Yeah, and I think that's part of the key is really about how do you bring these workloads up there because there's still a lot of applications that are on-prem that people want to burst up or maybe modernize as they go along, but the data has weight, it has gravity, so being able to do that. Let's dive a little deeper because I think, you know, it, it is what it is this year and cost optimization is a big thing. So what are, what are type of cost optimizations can and cost savings can organizations expect? So this is a huge value prop for these offerings. We actually um, completed a recent study where we benchmarked our Apex block storage uh, for public cloud offering with Navigator against uh, native public cloud storage just on its own and to see what the TCO is gonna look like. And I'm telling you, the, the results were astounding. Like, <laughs> you're not even gonna believe these numbers, but essentially, through this study, our Dell solution was able to deliver up to 87% cost savings compared to just a sta standalone native uh, public cloud storage offering. So, you know, what we're allowing to, to do here, and this, this highlights what's possible with these offers and what, you know, thinking big of what customers can actually realize here is when you pair our offerings with their pu preferred public cloud provider, we're just elevating that overall public cloud experience for them. Yeah, and I, I think that's the key is that customers are looking to understand how it does that impact themselves. So do you have a customer example that you could share with us around that, that really how they saw or how they could see Apex storage for public cloud really help them bring in those savings? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously this study is showing huge, huge numbers, really big savings. And, you know, even though this is a new family of offerings, we're already seeing real world examples of customers of, you know, what they can realize in specific scenarios. So, for example, um, a large financial in institution re recently completed a four month proof of concept with our Apex block storage uh, for public cloud offering. And the results were incredibly compelling. Um, it really checks the box from technical, operational, as well as financial. From a technical standpoint, they were able to see a 44% peak latency reduction, a 46% improvement in their data transfer speeds, 29% better data reduction. From an operational standpoint, um, they were able to create a universal storage layer. This concept that um, Shannon talked about more in the, in the previous segment where creating that consistent common storage between their on-premises and um, public cloud footprint, they were able to deliver this consistent experience, which creates, you know, operational simplicity as well as, um, you know, 
not having to learn new skill sets. So their IT admins are able to leverage like knowledge they already have. And it really also helps with them, um, you know, streamlining like maintenance costs and things like that. So um, finally, we're talking TCO. So <laughs> financial, that's the big one you're waiting for. Uh, they were able to see $14 million worth of savings over a five-year TCO and are going to be cash flow positive by year two. That's that's insane. Because <laughs> I, I think <laughs> when you start to look at it, I mean, a two-year payback is just un un unheard of, especially mm -hmm. with this. And I mean, most people are still trying to get their uh, applications up and running in the cloud at that point in time. But we'd be remiss if we didn't dive in a little bit deeper on the security aspect of it. Security and everything security is top of mind and organizations, particularly in cloud and public cloud for that matter, are super hyper aware of what's going on with their security and really picking it apart. So. Maggie, could you help us understand how does Apex Navigator really help customers with that? Absolutely, and you're so right, Rob, right? It's not just uh, cloud, public cloud, but multiple public clouds, right? So it's so important to kind of uh, make sure that that we build that confidence in our customers. So as we were building the product, uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, when we're building, there were two things that were absolutely important for us from a product standpoint. One was to keep security front and center. And second, making sure that we're not just bringing the product from a UX perspective to our end customers, but also have an API first uh, approach to it, right? So as we were building the, the security tenants, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we give our end customers full control, but also confidence in the ability to use a SaaS portal, especially because we know they're, they're looking to manage their storage assets into, you know, data management capabilities using a SaaS portal. So keeping that, um, you know, uh, data and security in mind was was extremely critical to us. Um, the way we did, if you break it down into the zero trust framework, you can see that how do you bring that? Uh, and the reality is to really give the end customers the full control over uh, the operations that they are trying to do, right? So uh, controls not just over the, the users, the roles, the permissions, the uh, groups, certificates, and the keys, bringing it all um, in the hands of users was very important. So if, if you are uh, an IT ops user who are starting, who's starting to use the multi-cloud navigator for, um, uh, for your organization, you can then decide which users need to be added to, uh, from your organization and what roles do they need to have when they are added to this, right? So really bringing, uh, bringing that notion along with also how those companies and organizations can bring their own uh, identity and access management and federate that with Dell's identity, right? Which is so important and I, I think this was one of the hardest things for us as we were bringing the product uh, to life because you know you're looking at the functionality that I'm talking about. Doing that functionality may be um, you know simple enough, or it might sound like, but doing it with that security centric uh, thing in mind is extremely important to us. Yeah, I like to say yet yeah, not another SSO, not another single sign on that I have to go and configure. It's federated in, which is I, I think key when you start to look at. It probably also helps them from a perspective of getting it. Yeah, you know, adopted inside that organization because they don't have to go and standardize on something else. Exactly, you're absolutely right. And then, you know, when we talk about operations like data mobility, for instance, once they're in there, you're not asking users to re-enter your credentials, you know, every single time. You want to probably automate those things using APIs and, you know, plugging it in with, um, you know, automation tools like Ansible or Terraform. And, um, you know, the users can just run those scripts for data mobility, for instance. And if it is federated, um, you know, it's it just, you know, signs on and kind of moves forward. So. Yeah, I, and I think that's a great, because, I mean, I think the integration with those, the Terraforms or open tofu or whatever comes next uh, in there and Ansible and stuff like that is really, I think, key because I think that, you know, uh, 
infrastructure as code integration is huge for anything that's going to be in public cloud or have a cloud operating model. Um, and with that, kind of let's take it down a level and kind of look at uh, kind of the workflows such as deployment, management, and monitoring and kind of give us a flavor for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is, uh, it, it's so exciting, you know, on, on things that we're doing. So let's talk about uh, deployment. Uh, our deployment, we're, we're extremely proud to kind of bring this um, it's a very complex task of not just deploying enterprise storage in the public clouds, so you're not just deploying your storage, but also the provisioning the underlying public cloud infrastructure that goes along with it. So our deployment is really a four-step, pretty uh, easy four-step process. Uh, you know, you log into your uh, Apex console, uh, you find your way into the Navigator piece. Once you're there, you pick your storage type, uh, today we're talking about block storage, but as Allison mentioned, file is coming pretty quick. So you pick your storage, you pick your cloud um, of your choice. Uh, in our first release, it's AWS. Then you go about picking your region, entering your public cloud credentials into the system, and then you get into a place where you get to pick the options. What kind of storage uh, offering do you, are you looking for a balanced uh, profile or a performance optimized uh, profile, add in the capacity that uh, you'd like to do. And then the other excellent part about our product is that uh, we give an option to do not just single uh, availability zone, but also multiple availability zones. So you get to uh, customize your uh, storage endpoint that you want to deploy in the cloud. Once you select those things, you basically hit deploy, you know, and it's really as simple as that to kind of just do that. And then we take care of all the magic behind the scenes of, you know, provisioning the public cloud infrastructure and deploying our software um, in, in the cloud. So that's a, about deployment. Uh, moving on to once it's deployed, you are in, you know, you're ready to kind of manage and monitor your uh, your environment. And we talked about single sign-on capabilities. So once you have deployed and up and running, we actually have the ability to continue to manage your ex using your existing storage management tools. And you have single sign-on into that capability. So you know, we're not replacing our existing element managers. If our storage uh, admins, IT ops uh, uh, folks are used to the tool sets that have been available, we just make them available in a much more integrated and easy manner for them to kind of go in and do their day-to-day -day activities. And then for monitoring, uh, we have our tool Cloud IQ. So it's really powered by the same capabilities of Cloud IQ, but extending it to monitor the license inventory, uh, the health, performance, capacity of your storage endpoints, not just of your cloud endpoints, but also your on-prem systems that you may have in your environment uh, from before, for instance, right? So you go about doing your day, day two activities of managing um, as well as monitoring of your assets. Yeah, so you see the full estate, which is I think critical uh, in being able to understand, you know, where should applications live, where does the data need to be, and I, I think that to me, and I, I said I'd circle back around on this because to me it's it's one of the biggest pieces to the puzzle for, you know, really enabling true cloud operations is really data mobility, and I, I think what your core value prop that you're providing is, hey, it's all the same and it talks to each other and you have that data mobility. So why don't we kind of, you know, go another level down and kind of help us understand what's enabling that. Yeah, so, you know, one of when, as we talk with our customers, we hear that when they're moving into the public clouds, um, you know, th there are two sets of, some are, um, figuring out which workloads need to move to the public cloud and others are, you know, they all started in the public cloud and probably are realizing that not all workloads belong in there, right? And then now you deal with the egress um, charges of bringing workloads down. But one of the things, pain points that we hear is how do you do that in a more seamless manner? And, and Shannon talked about our universal storage layer 
which is so important in bringing a capability like data mobility that we're talking about, right? So it's really using the native replication technology that our products have, leveraging that to have the ability to move your workloads because we do know that you know, uh, there can be a shift in business strategy, for instance, you know, oh, we need to move certain workloads to the cloud, or there might be that certain workloads don't belong in the public clouds, and you probably need to bring it back to uh, to the on-prem world. And so it's really driven um, uh, on on those uh, key, key uh, pain points of our customers that we're bringing to market. Yeah, I mean, even I, I think some of them, you know, could have been, like you said, not architect, just lifted and shifted to the cloud because somebody said, this is where a cloud first strategy, just put it up there and then, hey, you know what, we're going to actually bring it back down, re-engineer it properly, but you still need to move the data, which is, I think, one of the biggest pain points that when I talk to organizations that they have is really, how do I do this in a way that my people can understand it in the tooling that they can understand it as well. So why don't we also kind of delve in a little bit, Allison, with some of the use cases mm -hmm. that you're seeing from customers and really looking uh, what they're trying to uh, do to implement this type of solution. Right, so there's really, um, I would say, four high-level strategic use cases that we are, we're seeing customers implement with this, with this family of offerings are um, Apex storage for public cloud. So that's the combination of our endpoints across file block data protection, as well as our management capabilities with Navigator. And so the first of those would be extending existing on-premises infrastructure to the public cloud. So taking your on-prem fo footprint and being able to use that same, you know, consistent operating model and extend it into the public cloud um, where it makes sense. Uh, we have an example of um, a customer who was an existing, an existing PowerFlex customer who had a, a significant on-premises um, data footprint, or storage footprint. And we're looking to move some of that out to the public cloud. And we were able to do that with our Apex Block Storage for Public Cloud offering, um, being able to you know, streamline and make it really easy for them to implement you know, a disaster recovery option in the public cloud and you know free up some of that space on-prem and enable a true hybrid model um, as Maggie mentioned you know it's not it's not an either or there's some workloads that make sense on-prem and some in the public cloud and creating that hybrid model with the common storage um, you know is a is a nice seamless way to, to make that real um, the second one uh, is being able to run mission critical workloads in the cloud. So that's something that historically has been a challenge for some enterprises is you know, really getting the, the performance, um, the latency um, that they need and just the lack of enterprise storage capabilities essentially in the cloud to, to, demand, to power those demanding workloads. Um, with our storage in the public cloud, they can do that. You know, I've touched on this earlier, but you know, the unparalleled performance, our block storage offering, for example, delivers 100 times, up to 100 times the performance of native um, uh, block storage from the public cloud providers by itself. So again, elevating that experience by you know, adding our storage on there. Um, so then, you know, for example, we have a customer healthcare company who, when they saw these performance characteristics, you know, they were able to be confident in moving some of their cl clinical apps and database into the public cloud and, and know that they can run that. Uh, so that's an important one. And then the third is being able to integrate with uh, public cloud services. So obviously one of the, you know, benefits or why customers like the public cloud of, of many reasons is the plethora of uh, data services and application services available. And, you know, we are able to make it make it easier for customers to get their data into the cloud to leverage those and, and marry them. So um, that's the third. And then finally, it all comes back to optimizing costs. So I already talked a lot about the TCO. Um, you know, again, I don't mind saying those numbers again. I love them. Up to 87% cost savings um, they, can, they can realize um, from a TCO perspective. But it's not just that, it's also you know, ways to optimize their costs. So if customers have pre-committed 
cloud spend with their preferred public cloud provider, or they have um, an existing their existing Dell customer who has a Dell CLA, you know they can apply um, they can apply those credits to these offers and and help spend down that pre committed cloud spend. So there's also there's streamlining and optimization from that from that standpoint as well. Yeah, I mean AWS customers are always looking how did they you know optimize their EDP, and it's the same in Azure with those programs as well. Uh, knowing those programs very well, I think it's a mm. it, it's very, I think critical for people to be able to understand how to optimize their cloud bill because mm -hmm. I mean again, exactly. staying in that cloud operating model, have the same tooling, same navigation, same monitoring and management and optimization. I, I think that's really key to them. Uh, so, what about you know what's next? What's why don't we start with you? What's uh, next on your to do list here? Um, well, you know, really excited about today's announcement, but this is really just the first step, right? Um, we're going to, you know, we have Block um, on AWS supported with Navigator today, um, as I mentioned, File coming early next year, and we're just going to continue to expand from there to more, um, you know, supporting more endpoints, more public clouds. We're just going to continue to grow our ecosystem, and as well as new flavors um, of our management capabilities. So. For example, you know today we're we're talking about our navigator for multi cloud, but coming on a, on the heels of that, which we also talked about at Dell Tech World last year, will be our navigator for Kubernetes. Um, so essentially, um, that's going to be the next next flavor we're looking at there. Absolutely, but from your point, I mean, what what do you have on the roadmap there that that's coming next? What are you what are you excited about? So there's there's a ton. Yeah. <laughs> I, I talked to my engineering team saying there's no limit to our backlog. <laughs> But in it, you know, in terms of what capabilities we're going to build, the capabilities, you know, expand those five that I talked about and add uh, more capabilities to um, the the functionality itself. But you know, what I would really like to call out is that everything that we talked about, the Navigator plus the Apex Block Storage, is available today, and and users can go in and try it because we are bringing a a uh, free 90-day trial with all of our products. We want to know, we know this is new, right? And we do want to build that confidence with our customers. So the ability to go and try it out before having to really commit and buying the product is is important. So, you know, my, my thing would be go check out what we're building. We're super excited about it to bring to market. And uh, we think it's going to be a game changer. Yeah, and to that effect, I think, you know, for where they should go next, we'll put a link to that right in the description here so that they can go and find it very easily and you know don't have to go searching around. It'll be right there in the in the description. So uh, I, I want to thank you both uh, for coming on board today. You know, welcome to the cube and being on here. It, it's been fun. I mean, I know how huge this is and having been at a hyperscaler myself, that getting that layer stack right and making it look the same for multi-cloud is huge. Uh, it's 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 a lot of effort. So thank you for coming on board. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. And thank you all for watching this episode of Apex Storage for Public Cloud on the Cube, the leader in high tech enterprise analysis and coverage. Thanks very much.